<laughs> okay, so day two on Mishle 2128, aid uh, which we translated as an aid is either a witness or testimony of deceit, okay, will be destroyed or lost. And a man who listens or hears will speak forever. Okay. Our questions were, what is an aid kazavim? Why plural? Or sorry, what is aid kazavim in general? And then sub, uh, subsidiary questions. Why is it plural? And is it the same thing as an aid checker? Okay. Two, um, is it known that he's lying? In other words, can you identify him as an aid kazavim? Or is this puzzle describing what happens when people fail to identify him as an aid kazavim? Three, what does what is being yoved? What does that mean? Oh, sorry, no. What is the object that is being yoved? Is it the aid? Is it his kazavim? Is it something else? How is it being yoved? Yoved to what? Like lost to what? Destroyed by what? Shomea, what is being listened to by this guy? The ish shomea. Is he listening to the lies to the people who are responding to the aid kazavim? To something else, yeah. Objects is the is the game name of the game here. Uh, six. What prompts the Ish Shomea to, to speak Lenetzach? Like, why is he speaking Lenetzach? You know, what does that mean? Or what, why? Why is he doing it? Eight. What does it mean to talk Lenetzach? That sounds exhausting. Nine. What is good or significant about the fact that he's talking Lenetzach? Right. That seems. I mean, yeah. It doesn't seem to be. Seemingly, you would talk as much as you need to talk and then stop. Um, <laughs> 10, and then this is the major question. What's the scenario here? What is it describing? Uh, first of all, is this limited to a courtroom scenario? And if so, what is the halakhic status of this aid? Um, that was just a question someone asked, uh, but whatever. Um, but in other words, is it limited to the courtroom scenario or is it about any form of testimony, like telling your friend that you saw something or like testifying about like quality of something um, or is it something else? Uh, how are the two halves opposites, right? You got a, 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 a testifier and a listener. And then who is the audience and what's the practical advice? Okay, and because we, and by we, I mean me, <laughs> overcame my laziness and, and typed up uh, notes. So then we have a uh, remnants of yesterday, right? So we had Sean, we had three basic approaches. Sean and Isaac had the approach that basically the, um, that this is talking about a, an advantage that truth has over falsehood. Sorry, an advantage that, okay. I don't want to put it in terms of advantages. Okay. If you put truth and falsehood in a battle, so ultimately truth wins out, okay, because truth is real, right? And it doesn't need anything to prop it up, whereas lies can be found out. There's always a threat that a lie will undo itself, okay? But the problem, so in that sense, then you'll, uh, the false testimony will be lost. Um, but the problem is that it will, once the lie catches hold and starts spreading, it'll, it could go on forever, Right. Um, and uh, and then Sean added the point that the it takes the reason why that is, is it takes longer to verify a truth. Um, and therefore, truth is at an inherent disadvantage from the get go, uh, whereas lies are just very easy to spread, you know, especially if it's a click away. And then we had another like a uh, variant here of that. Uh, the witness himself is going to be destroyed because his reputation is ruined uh, once people find out that he was lying. But then the damage caused by his lies will last forever. Okay, that was one approach. Oren's approach <clears throat> was that this is someone who aid kazavim uh, is plural, means that he's he's habitually telling lies for some form of, uh, of self-aggrandizement or, or gain. Uh, and the thing is, is that even though he's doing it for his own gain, ultimately he's going to be forgotten, but the thing will persist. Uh, so he's not going to quite get the glory that he seeks. We didn't quite flesh out that uh, that approach. And then Akiva said a different interpretation for the plural, which is not that he's telling many lies, but he's repeating the same lie over and over and over again. Um, and um, the what happens and then uh, right. And then that's going to lead to it being uh, having the staying power. And then David says that um, if you are someone who is uh, trusted, that was how you're saying aid is right. And aid is someone who's like people are relying on as a witness. And if you knowingly lie, then you're going to be destroyed in the sense that people who um, find out that you were lying will always talk about you as an untrustworthy person. And you did not explain the second half, right? And that's the line that's talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always people always talk about you as the liar, right? Right. Like, like right. It's because, right? In other words, aid, because I mean, will be destroyed because people who find out about it will talk about it forever. Okay, those were the three approaches yesterday. Then we did... Matsuas David, which we um, understood his shot, but I don't think we fully like wrapped it up. So he says, Af im lo yusam even if this aid is not 
proven to be a false witness in Bastian and he doesn't get punished by Bastian, nevertheless, he will be punished by Deshamayim, which means that he'll get consequences, whether people will find out about him or people will, he'll get consequences for the lie itself, you know, he'll lose his reputation. Something will happen outside of court. Even though the aid himself will be destroyed uh, by the punishment of his lies, Hine, by the way, this is a good proof that Onesh does not necessarily mean punishment, it can mean consequences, okay, because it's Bidesh Mayim. So Hine, Devarav lo ne'avdu lihishtakeh minalev, his words will not be forgotten from people's hearts. He kol ish shomea devaro yisaprem adolam. Anyone who hears his word will keep talking about it uh, ad infinitum. V'chashro ki emesu, thinking that it's true. Okay, so the thing we didn't get at, about this was the unified idea, I think. That why are we talking, it's weird, the puzzle is saying that this guy might, you might not get caught, but you're going to get consequences. But people will remember what you talk about forever. So, like, who's this directed at? What's the practical consequence or out, uh, lesson? Wait, yeah, sure. So, this guy, so according to Matus David, this guy is testifying falsely in court. Court doesn't catch him, but the lies will catch up with him outside of court. Okay. So, he'll be destroyed. And then the second half of the Pasuk is saying, but people will talk about what you say forever because they'll think it's true. So, it seems like a mixed message. Like, if, our, if we're talking. Oh, it- that's referring to the same man. Who the same man, lied yeah. In court. And the reason why is because uh, lies take hold and people are going to, like, once they spread, then they're spreading out for a long time. No, I'm saying, like, the, the last thing that you said yeah. about people are going to, people think what you're saying is true. Like, yeah, I mean, once once the, if the guy lies. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I hear what you're yeah, saying. So the, 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 okay. In other words, I think it's even going to be disconnected from him. Like, once that lie, like, it's like when people um, make a, um, a false accusation, you know, in in uh, in court. Even if they lose the court case, like that accusation sticks to the person who they made yeah. it against, and then right. it's it's hard to erase that. Yeah, yeah. Ellie. Um, do we, can you offer like a tidy translation on Yab Uh, yeah. So the way the Matutus David is translating it is destroyed, uh, and destroyed meaning that he'll suffer consequences for his lies. Uh huh. Not like totally like destroyed, destroyed, but like he'll get consequences, you know. When, when I first read it, it kind of seemed like he's gonna lose the court case, like those right. justified falsely. You know, it's funny, I don't think we use the word lose right. That's in Hebrew a, for a yeah, right, right. Yeah. So I think so Matus David's the easiest one is it's just generically referring to thing bad things he will suffer as a result of his lies. Okay. You know? Like he's not death. Not death, not, not necessarily death. Yeah, in other words, like uh like, like, it, yeah. Like, are you talking about like the natural consequences? Natural consequences. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So, like, I gave the example yesterday. Um, I'm going to say it again because it's funny. Is um, is uh, is uh, uh, is from Joseph Levine. So he said that his his uh, he corrected my. I, I told him over, and he corrected he corrected the the, the line. So okay. I have to like do chuva here. So okay. he said. Uh, so this is a, a kid who's in ninth grade, uh, and so he said his his whole class found the um, the answers to all the tests online. You know, so he uh, so they all cheated multiple times and he didn't so the, finally the, the, they got caught when all of the rest of the class got 100 percent, and he didn't get 100 percent. so so he uh, so what happened was at first they started you know they were cheating in a in a way where they were trying to mask the fact that they had all the answers but then they they couldn't control their their lying you know and so he said that at the uh uh, uh, uh as the test was being handed back to them one of the guys said boys we've gone too far i said gentlemen because i thought that was funnier but uh yeah yeah, yeah. So, so in other words like like natural consequence is like, like you get in trouble for cheating or for lying, you know, or if it's a, uh, or if you have a reputation, no one's going to trust you anymore or something like that, you know, natural consequences. So our question here is like, the best way I can say the question is it feels like a mixed message is if the message of the puzzle is don't lie because you'll get caught. So that takes care of the first half, but then why do we need the second half saying your lies are going to be there forever? If the message is like, you know, be careful about like, yeah, who's the message for what and what is it for? Yeah, so um, I'm going to define the audience as um, like the people who are hearing the lives of this person, mm-hmm. the potential lives of this person. I think that's the way to go, yeah. Um, and so then the first half is, I think, contrasting um, with the second half, which is, right, so we, we do have like this adage of like cheaters never prosper. And right. so like, people think, oh, so the cheater's not going to prosper. Right. right. But that just because he doesn't prosper ah. doesn't mean that like the things that he's doing aren't going to be. Okay. So that's good. Right. So in other words, there's a feeling people have that because the person who does wrong does get caught, 
that somehow like makes the situation better or like that that you know um Absolve like you responsibility and within the case right? right like if i just listen to him or like i allow his whatever he's saying right to like enter my mind and then like whatever he'll get calm and then like well right fine. yeah the damage goes on and uh and, and and takes on a life of its own outside of the, the wrongdoer yeah Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna. I'm just gonna ask this question here. So I, I feel like this idea, even though the puzzle is clearly only talking about a false witness, I feel like the the that lesson applies to areas outside of false testimony. So if we could come up with an example outside of false testimony, I think it would solidify the idea. Yeah. Uh, different. Topic. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly how if this came to someone to the puzzle, but I definitely do know this phenomenon of when someone gets away with something. Yeah. They love talking about it, like how they managed to like sneak this thing there. Yeah. That. And there is like an aspect of like, well, that's not being the bear. At least that person himself. I know the person who is each from Bayal and that's not being the bear, which yeah. isn't as smooth. I don't think other people as much talk about like, oh, my friend managed to do this as much as I managed to do this. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's a way that it can work out with the bus open. No okay, this is it's, it's interesting, uh, interesting reading. I thought of an example, by the way, um, that uh, so obviously in the last. Um, uh presidential election then there were uh you know um <laughs> allegations made of like sketchy things going on with uh with the electoral process right so whether or not that happened it forever is going to affect the integrity of elections like people will always be suspicious that that that, that thing happened so like like even if you could like find out who did who, you know who, who did things illegally and then like lock them up the damage is uh, the, the damage that has been done and like you can't you can't get rid of that anymore you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so what is the practical application of that insight so i think it's to the person who is listening to people making statements and yeah like, don't just think like like if you're suspicious about somebody yeah don't just think like all right like i'll trust them and then like ah. get their dues and like then everything will all wrap up and then they're right. both are lying. Right. Right. You need to be more critical. Right. And so I, I think this pairs with the point you made yesterday, which is that uh, the damage is perpetuated by those who hear it and pass it on without being um, without being what do you call uh, critical in their in their listening. You know, so so you, you even though that guy's the guy who started it by the lie, you you are perpetuating the damage irrespective of, of, of his wrongdoing and his getting caught. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do Rabina Yona, because Rabina Yona, I think, takes a similar approach here. Um, so Rabina Yona is in the packet on the left column, I think. Is it the same page? Top left. Top left, thank you. Okay, Aid Kazavim Yoved, Misha Darfo Lahaid Al Hakaza Basipur Dvarov, someone who habitually testifies about falsehood when in, in his words, I guess, meaning I think we're not necessarily talking about like in a court of law, like when he says Sipur Dvarov, I think like just in general. Kamosha Kasuv, as it says, someone who breathes falsehoods, Yoved, he'll be destroyed. He says, I've already said about how the group of liars is one of the corrupt groups. This is in Shari Tshuva, which is the book he wrote on Tshuva. All right, we don't need to look at that. So he, says, he quotes this passage in Devarim that says, a, how do you translate? Goy asher lo tishma lashono. Which does not hear his. Do you know the context? Is it the Tokaga and Kisavo, right? So this is talking about what's going to happen to the Israel. You are going to be exiled into a Goy Asher Lo Tishma into a nation that. That nation doesn't listen to God's talking. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, uh, so it's talking about you, that you don't Tishma. Thanks. <laughs> you don't Tishma Lashono. You don't Tishma its language. Okay, so what, how do you think you translate Tishma? Understand. Understand. Okay, that's the reason why he's bringing this in. Okay, yeah. and he says, uh, Kara lahavana shmia. It calls understanding shmia, listening. Because you can't say that you've really heard or listened to something unless you understand it. Um, Gam beze yikari, uh, uh, hold on just a second here. And I, I'm, I'm going to quote, the clearest expression of this I know is in the Rashba's response to a Christian guy who was like asking him about the Trinity uh, and he gives an explanation of what the Shema is. And this is important for halakhically. When you say the Shema, you have to have three kavanas in mind when you say the word Shema. So he says, um, he says, Kimilas Shema kolela shlosha the word Shema includes three concepts. Shmiyas ozen, 
hearing of the ear, ki ozen shum avatashreni, okay, he quotes a pasuk, havanas alev, the mind's understanding, and then kabbalas hadavar v'ha'amanasa, and then accepting the thing and believing in it. Okay, so he's saying when you say, um, when you say the Shema, you should have all three meanings in mind. And he says there's an order to it. He says um, that number one, oh, he says, uh, 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 when, you, when you hear my when you hear my mitzvos, what does it mean? He says, you should hear the mitzvos understand and analyze them. You should hear the mitzvos, understand and analyze them. And then after analyzing and understanding, then you believe that God is one. So you need all three. First step is you hear the ideas about God being one, which, you know, even if you don't understand it, secondly, you have to understand it uh, and verify it. And then the third thing is that you accept it based on that understanding. So that's the word Shema. So that's how he's interpreting it here. He's saying Shemia means understanding. Uh, so it's calling the guy who understands statements uh, and listens to them proper all their qualities and is exact about them and and uh, and is precise with things in his mind. And he guards them without addition and subtraction. That's what complete listening would be. So let's just make sure we get what he's saying here. First half is saying, he hasn't explained the whole thing yet. First half is saying, this guy just speaks, um, uh, habitually tells lies, okay? And he'll be destroyed. He doesn't really explain what destroying means. Ish shomea means a guy who understands what he hears, which means he takes the statements, he thinks about them, understands them, and is careful not to add or, or detract from them. So the perfect listener, let's call it, right? The perfect listener is someone who, who receives everything, understands everything being said, and then doesn't add his own stuff. So what is it saying about him? That guy will speak forever. What does that mean? Even though speaking a lot is not a good mida, as it says in earlier in in a multitude of words, then error will not be lacking. In other words, if you speak a lot, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to say the wrong thing. Indeed, someone who is precise and careful about what he hears, to tell the thing exactly as he heard it. Where's does that mean? If he wants, he can speak all day. Because that kind of guy um, will not become weary of speaking words and it's not going to be a burden to him. But that's on the condition that he understands what he heard. Uh, to make sure that they're proper to say. And from the fact that Shlomo made the Ish Shomea the opposite of the Eid Kazavim, then you'll understand that we're right in our explanation. Okay, so what is he saying? Well, let's summarize the facts here and then get the idea. Facts are this guy is speaking lies. And he'll be destroyed. Rabbi Yonah doesn't explain what that means. Ish Shomea is a guy who hears everything and understands it and preserves it and doesn't add or subtract anything. That guy, oh, and he thinks about whether to say it. That guy can speak all day long and, uh, and there's not going to be anything bad about it. So the question is, what is the idea? I mean, we're seeing, still seems like we're comparing like, to me, it still feels like we're comparing apples and oranges, yeah. you know? I mean, it's not apples and oranges. It's apples and a different variety of apples. Like, like the, like the guy, the the he's saying, no, it's like this. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's just two sides of an apple. <laughs> I don't know. The the guy who is Ishomea is hearing. He's the perfect witness, but like ear wise, right? Like he's hearing everything and preserving it faithfully. He's like a a a a, 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 a recorder, but he's also good because he understands what he's hearing and like he decides whether to say it. The the guy in the first half is not careful about what he's saying. He'll even lie about it. He doesn't think about when to tell it, you know, and his indiscriminate, inaccurate talking is going to get him into trouble. So it is opposites. The guy who, who is indiscriminate and uh, in, in, in what he reports, and then the guy who is very, very, very careful with what he reports. What's the plus of saying? Yeah. Well, it doesn't sound like it's indiscriminate. It sounds like he is particularly... So the, the the reason why I'm saying indiscriminate is because in describing the Ish Shomea, the Rabbeinu Yonah says, 
מתנאי עניין הבנה של הדברים שיש בה, הבנה בעניין ההוא אם הם דברים ראויים לספרם, he says whether it is proper to tell them. So that implies that the first guy is not, it's true he's distorting it, but he's also not thinking should I say this or not. Uh-huh. That's the indiscriminate part. And then that's just how he's going to say Kedavim? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. So like we're really talking about like a, a blabbermouth who doesn't worry about accuracy or truth or whether it's proper to, to, to tell something. That person's going to get into trouble with their speech and doesn't specify what the trouble is. And then another guy can talk forever if he is an Ishamea. Who's, who's the audience of this? Like it definitely seems to be promoting an Ish Shomea, saying you should be an Ish Shomea, someone who understands and only says something that's proper to say if you report it accurately. But it sounds like what's the appeal he's saying about this? It sounds like he's saying everyone wants to be able to talk unrestrainedly. No, yeah. He's not like I I don't think he I don't think talking forever is like the incentive. I think it's like he he's just like going to like an extreme by saying like, correct this hyperbole he's so like reliable yeah and good that like he might as well talk forever right right yeah yeah, yeah. That, that that's definitely how he's reading it yeah yeah so but i am asking though what is the incentive then like why do we need to be like in other words like if, if i if i was telling you why you should be this ish shomea i would say because you're going to not get into trouble right like you're not going to be you know, the more inaccurate you are in what you say or the more unrestrained you are in your speech, the more you're going to get into trouble through like speaking. But here, the puzzle is framing it as an incentive. Like you can talk forever, you know? I agree it's an exaggeration, but like why is the puzzle phrase it that way? Like he could talk forever. I have like a half thought. Uh, yeah. It also kind of seems in contrast to like initially you talked about like being light in your speech, like a person who runs their mouth, that's not a typical like good character. Right, which we're being able to point it out, right? The abundance in speech is not a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this half thought, okay? I don't know if this is gonna work, but okay. Like <laughs> why do people tend to like run their mouth? They don't have anything to say. I mean, it's true. Okay, well, but that's, I'm saying like in their mind, what is motivating them? Yeah. I know, like, I used to run my mouth and I, my motivation was like, people like talking. Yeah, I think people like talking and and the way people say is people like hearing themselves speak, you know, people like the reactions, people, you know, there, there is a certain appeal in just talking and then getting the, uh, you know, the, the attention from that. And so there is a fantasy of like wanting that in an unlimited way. The problem is if you do that in an unlimited way, then you get into trouble with what you say. So, so this guy, so the, 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 what's the best way you can outlet that emotion is being someone who only like says stuff that you know for sure is accurate and that you don't add and that you determine is the right thing to say. And then what happens is people actually like listening to you because everything you say is valuable and accurate. You know, so you get the, the thing that the, that the blabbermouth is seeking, which is this universal admiration and people like admiring for what he says, the Ish Shomea gets that, but he gets it without any of the risks and he gets a higher level of admiration because people trust him as someone who only says valuable things. Yeah. And then there's also the flip where it'll probably start off like the first like two things that the eight kids have even says. Yeah. It's probably going to be like those like more fun, more enjoyable things to hear, but eventually that'll like go yeah. down versus the not as exciting things from the Ishomea will end up. Yeah, if you want to go listen correct. To yeah, yeah. I, I, just to, to, to drive the idea home, I, hopefully we all know people like this. Not, I'm probably not a lot of people, but there are people who are very, very, very like reserved in what they say. But whenever they say something, then it is worth listening to and you enjoy listening to it and like you can rely on it. You know, that's like the quality I think it's getting in Ishomea. Yeah. Well, it feels like when that's like, like I listen to you like you would never actually yeah I would listen to that person forever yeah that that's the, the, yeah right yeah they could speak forever okay all right that's all I got for Ramiona okay now I told you that Miiri connects the three psukim uh, earlier this week today and then next week's but turns out the the next pasuk he just says it's repeating the same idea so let's read the Miiri on the the two psukim we've done this week okay and he learns it about pretending that you're religious. Okay, uh, this is a, a similar theory that we had before, but um, uh, let's see, it's on the previous page. 
So let's just review the Pasuk. It was Zevach Rishaim To'eva Af Ki Bezima Yevienu. Uh, the offering of the wicked is an abomination uh, Af when they bring it in, um, in, Z- in Zima. Okay, in uh, in scheming or in uh, in like negative plotting. Okay, yeah. And then eight kazavim yoved ish shumel and esel hidaber. Okay, don't read twenty nine. We'll save that for next week. Okay, remez al hamischastim. How do you translate mischased? So he's trying to turn other people into chasidim. Uh, no, opposite, opposite. Mis his pile makes himself pious. Right now, um, his pile. This is something that I feel like is not very well known. When his pile is reflexive. Okay, reflexive means two, but there are two uses of the reflexive binyan in Hebrew. I'm using grammatical terms because like the only grammatical thing I know, <laughs> and I only know this from the Meiri, is uh, like, um, so mis asher, for example, is either to make yourself wealthy or to pretend you're wealthy. Okay, the reflexive can be used to be uh, uh, for faking also. Okay, so here, it doesn't mean someone who makes himself pious in actuality. It means someone who, who like f- pretends to be pious. Okay, so this is uh, alluding to those who, uh, who pretend to be pious, who make themselves appear to be perfected in their actions and in their piety, and ambush lurks in their innards. Okay, that's a borrowing the phrase from a meaning that inside then they're, they're all corrupt. And uh, regarding this, it says, uh, It says that the Rashaim who publicize themselves by bringing uh, korbanos and in, in making verbal confessions, uh, and their heart is, uh, is twisted and distorted. Their offerings are also despicable and abominable to God. That's what it means when it says, when they bring it in uh, Zima. Even when they bring it with good Kavana, since they go back to continually be involved in sins, it's fit for their offering to be... Um, uh, uh, rejected and abominable. Especially when they bring it with bad kavana. So first half he's saying, even when they bring it with good kavana, since their lifestyle is one of wickedness and pretending to be righteous, then even their good korbanas are bad. And then certainly when they bring the korban itself, just for the appearance of piety, like we said last time. Um, Vizima he who shame klal al hamachshava bin la bin latova. This is the point we made grammatically that zima is a term that refers to plotting, whether for bad or for good. Ella uh, shlafia inyano, but based on the context, you forish al machshava ra. We can explain it here to be bad plotting. Kagon shetigam unklos zima he, like unklos translates in the arayos, zima he atzas chitin, a council of, of sinfulness. The Akhar, okay, so that, that's just the first part. That's very similar to the way we learned it before, that they, uh, they're they faking stuff. Uh, whether, yeah, okay, fine. The Amar Akhar Kach, Eid Kasavim Yove, Klomar, Zeha Makriv Korban, Beino Ozev Orchos Risho, this guy who brings a Korban and doesn't abandon the ways of his wickedness, who Eid Kasavim, he is a false uh, a witness of lies or a false witness. Klomar, Shem Meid Eidu Sheker Ba'asmo, he's testifying falsely about himself. Shem Isvade Vachoser Lachata'av. Uh, and because he's um, confessing and then going back to his sins. The ish shomea, but a person who is shomea, let's figure out what he means by shomea, la'azo derech resha v'le'echos b'nesiv yosher, to abandon the way of wickedness and to cling to the path of uprightness. So how is he translating shomea? Presumably, like, really embodies these type of traits. Right, so how would you translate it? That's a good explanation. How do you translate shomea here? It misunderstands, like, what it's about. So I think he's using a different meaning of Shomea, right? What, what's the conventional meaning of Im Shamoa Tishmu El Mitzosai? If you, it's not if you listen to my Mitzos. God doesn't just want us to listen to the Mitzos. Obey. obey, right? Obey, right? So, so, so like, like listen to my advice. When you say listen to my advice to someone, you don't just mean like listen. You mean like follow, you know? So I think he's saying Ishomea is a person who actually like obeys God's will, you know, or, or, or who, who uh, subordinates himself to it. To abandon the wicked way and to cling to the path of uprightness, Lenetzach Yedaber, he will speak forever. Klomar Kishimedaber Umisvade is where it gets a little uh, when he speaks and confesses. Al Daas Shelo Yashub O Lachato Humedaber, he's doing it with the intention to not come back to sin. Lenetzach Inyano Al Kolzman Chiyuso. Lenetzach means for the rest of his life. Klomar Shenigmar Taavaso Velo Yashub Od. His his um. Taiva is complete and he doesn't go back to it again. Don't read on because that's going to be the next passage. Uh, yeah. 
So, so what is it? So he, he's folding this puzzle into the last one. He's saying that this guy is, let me just uh, type out a new translation according to Meiri. So Meiri is saying, Meiri, so a, uh, a false witness, i.e. a person who testifies falsely about himself, himself by bringing a korban on a sin which he doesn't actually do teshuva for, okay, uh, will be destroyed, which he also didn't explain what that means. Um, but a man who, who obeys God by doing real teshuva, um, his speech, i.e. his confession, will persist forever because he doesn't go back to his sin. So to be honest, like it, it seems a little forced. To, that second part seems a little forced to me. But regardless, let's just see what, what idea can we get out of this if we take our Pasuk? Like, what would our Pasuk be adding to the previous Pasuk about faking religiosity? You know, like this, put, like, why do you need a completely separate Pasuk to talk about the Vidui itself, like the confession itself? You know, that the confession, testifying falsely about yourself will destroy you. But if you testify truthfully in a way that lasts forever, then kudos, like, what, what's the... What's the idea here? Because I think you would agree with me, maybe, that the essential idea is in the first passage, according to him, because that's the whole scenario, is the, is the corruption of a person who's feigning religiosity, you know? Well, isn't the first one more about how it's a toeva? Right, right. It's a toeva, but it, it, it's... Um, uh, but the toeva is the fact that it's not genuine, right? And, and not genuine in the sense that like, there's, there's several types of not genuineness. Like he, we, we said before that a person could, you know, do vidui without abandoning the sin. And that's like Tovo Bashar Biado. Miri seems to be learning this guy's even worse that he's pretending and wants people to see him publicly. He used the word public as like a, a, a tzaddik, you know? Yeah. I think that that also speaks on why the word Tovo is used. Like socially, the Zebach is usually accepted, right? Like, our great institutions are usually donated, but right. right. And the co the coin's not the coin's not gonna like reject his korban, yeah. right? He's still gonna be able to bring the korban. The yeah. Well, yeah, always entitled to do that. But once they start opening it, like you're not allowed to, you can't have both. Like you can be uh, a person who say makes their money in an illicit way and, and donates to charity. Um, but I think when you start preaching, that's where it'll start to fall apart and, and um people people will grasp onto what's really happening. Okay. I see. So, so in other words, so it's interesting. The Meiri does not comment on Yoved, but Yoved does seem to be a big part of the idea. And you're saying that that's where it's going to draw the line. Like when you, there's a person who acts righteous and is really not, and there's a certain societal tolerance for that kind of person. But when you're going out of your way to, um, oh, sorry, I got a really good Ozark example, but I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> when you go out of your way to, uh, to like, um, you double down on the the fake act, but in speech, that's really what's going to expose you to uh, to being you know destroyed. I feel like there's another thing also. There's a further level of corruption in the testifying about yourself verbally. Like in other words, the guy the guy who's involved in bad stuff, who allows people to assume that he's changed his ways, is different than the guy who is is like declaring that I have completely reformed and like, I'm, I'm not gonna go back to my evil ways. There's a further corruption in the second one. I don't know what to make of this. Can I, can I can we just switch gears uh, uh, for a second? I wanna read you the Meiri and the Derek Nister. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is a good one, especially for our yeshiva. Um, the, so just review of what Meiri Derek Nister is. So Meiri has Mishle on two levels, Nigla, which is, decision-making advice uh, for like attaining, you know, um, like worldly success, you know, like, like uh, uh, you know, maximum pleasure, minimum pain, right? Nister, his hidden interpretations have to do with the life of the soul or the mind. So he always gives two interpretations. So check this out. Okay, uh, turn to the next page, but 
conveniently ignore the first part. Are they written in a separate text? Uh, they're in the same text. And he'll just introduce it with a separate paragraph break that says, Uvederek Nister. See it there um, in the Miri? Yeah. OK, so and here I'm more concerned with his idea, not the, not the uh, explanation of the Pasuk, OK? Because I think it's a little forced. Uvederek Nister, Kara Zevak Rashaim. So what does Zevak Rashaim mean? Hamodim b'metius ha'kel v'achduso v'shar pinos ha'yunios. So these are people who, who uh, acknowledge the existence of God and his oneness and the other fundamentals that can be proven through philosophy, okay? The Kofrim, the Pinos Hatorios, but they deny the fundamentals of the religion that are only, that we only know through Torah. Okay, just back up here one second, just to get the premise. So Judaism has many fundamentals. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so there are fundamentals uh, that can be proven outside of, of uh, Nivua. So God's existence, God's oneness, God's non-physicality, God being outside of time, you know, uh, the falsehood of Avodah Zarah, uh, you can prove those through philosophy alone, okay? But then there are other things like reward and punishment, Hashgah HaPratis, Mashiach, Tchias Mesim, that you own, you would, a, a rational person would not accept it. And the only reason why we accept it is because we know it through Nevoah. And the only reason why we accept Nevoah is because we know it through Torah Misenai. And the only reason we accept Torah Misenai is because we can prove it, you know, rationally, right? So in other words, there are these two categories of fundamentals. Zevach Roshayim is a guy who only will believe things if he can prove them philosophically, but he'll deny things if they're only through Nevoa. And he says, In their minds, they are exalting God. Um, to exalt his level also from the things that are included in the Torah fundamentals. I don't know what he means by this yet. That's why he calls these things an offering of the wicked. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean. I want to read the whole thing and we'll go back. But, but because of his denial of the Torah fundamentals, the ones that could be only known through Torah, he's calling him a false witness. Okay, so just, again, forget the interpretation of the puzzle for a second. He's saying you, you have a guy who's engaged in two things. One is admirable. The other one is condemnable if that's a word. Admirable is the fact that he's accepting things through philosophy that he could prove. That Judaism is in favor of. But then the, the condemnable part is he's denying things that can't be proven through philosophy. Okay, so what do we say about this? The Ish Shomea, Romes El Hanishan Bakabala Hanivuais. Ish Shomea is a guy who relies on the prophetic tradition. So that's a guy who says, look, I can't prove Scarf Onesh, I can't prove God's Hashgacha, but I'm going to rely on it because it's through Nivua, and I believe in, uh, in Nivua based on Torah Misenai. Lenetzach Yidaber, he will talk forever. Kolomar Devarav Yivyehu Lenitzchius, his speech will bring him to eternality. Okay, meaning that he's going to actually like be, um, you know, his soul is going to have eternal existence. Okay, and then he explains the third puzzle, which is for next week. Yeah. So, so what's the uh, what's the idea here? And I feel like that that part that I couldn't translate is the most important part. Okay. He's trying to explain why they call it Zevach Rashaim, right? Zevach is something that you bring for God, but it's Rashaim because he is denying Nevoah, right? He's saying, because they exalt God in their according to their thoughts, to exalt his 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 stature. Gam min Oh, I get what he's saying. He's saying it like this. The Torah says, right? This guy says, I'm I'm doing better than the average Jew because I can prove that God is one and not just rely on the Vua. So that's the fact that he is in his mind, and he rightly so, he is bringing a korban, right? That he's saying, like, he's, he's, he's saying, I am proving something that the Torah teaches. But his korban is rendered invalid because he's rejecting all these other things that can only be proven through nevuah. So what's the mistake here? Like, like what, what is the, I mean, the mistake, the guy's making the mistake of, of rejecting nevuah, but I'm saying, like, this, it seems like the mistake is this guy is conceiving of himself in one way, and, and Mishle is shooting that down, saying, no, 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 even your good offerings are going to be rejected by God, right? Even your philosophizing, in other words, a philosopher who proves God's existence independently of Torah and then accepts the prophetic tradition, that's the guy whose philosophical proofs God will approve of, so to speak, you know? But the guy who, who proves God's existence through philosophy and then rejects things that he can't prove through philosophy, that's the, then God will even reject his affirmation of, 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 of philosophical proofs.
could I venture something just in the interest of time? Yeah. We can always talk about it later. Is I think the, the idea here is, you know, Judaism values the intellect. I don't need to prove that here, <laughs> okay, you know. Um, but the, the, the problem is that the, uh, the intellect is not the thing, you can't know uh, everything through your mind alone, right? That's why, again, you, there'd be no reason to believe that Mashiach is gonna come, except for the fact that all the Nevi'im say it, and we can prove Nevo based on Torah Messinai, you know? So the guy who thinks that the human intellect is the, everything has to be rooted in the intellect, but that doesn't mean that you can arrive at all. There's some things that are beyond the, the capacity of the intellect to, to, uh, to prove or to know. And that's why we have Nebuah. So like this guy is like, like deifying the intellect in a certain sense, meaning he's on the right track in the sense that he knows that the intellect is our only tool for gaining knowledge of reality, but he wants to, to make, um, he wants to, uh, I, I'm not expressing it correctly. Let me think of an analogy in, hold on just a second here. I want to think of an analogy in a non-religious area. See, let's take scientists, for example, right? You have gone to the Wikipedia article on um, of the universe. I forgot where they're up to right now in terms of like um, how, how many 0. 0.000 seconds like um, we can have knowledge of. There's like, you know, science basically starts at like a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, right? But before that, you science can't know because that was the, you know, the, the you can't get data before that point, okay? So for a scientist to say like, so a, a true scientist would say that the intellect is my greatest tool for using science, but I just can't go beyond that point. But, uh, 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 but what the problem is that a lot of scientists, what they do is they try to force the scientific method beyond that point, and they get into philosophy without knowing it, and then they make irrational conclusions because they're pushing the method beyond what it can actually handle. You know, so in other words, every let me put it this way: every area of of, uh, of knowledge has its own methodologies, and there are limits to those methodologies. And those who are actually like uh, using the methods correctly will acknowledge their limits. Like archaeology can only find out so many things; chemistry can only find out so many things. You know. So this person here that the puzzle is talking about is using his intellect to prove things that can be proven, but he's going beyond the methodology of intellect when he tries to prove things that can't be proven, you know? And, and, and the Kiddush of the puzzle is like, I would have said, he's only making a, a mistake in regards to those things that you can only know through Navua. But what the puzzle is saying is, is that he's, it's gonna even corrupt the things that he is, are in the realm of provability. I'm not expressing it clearly. I got to think about it some more, but that, that's, I'm very intrigued by this Mary here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's just summarize what we got from the Rubina Yona, uh, which was the new idea today. Rubina Yona said that, um, oh yeah, speaking as much as you want because you you like, everyone likes hearing themselves talk and having people listen to you. If you indulge in that to the extent where you're saying stuff that's not proper to say and adding and subtracting and lying, you're eventually going to be destroyed by that speech. But if you work on being someone who says things only when they need to be said, and you're accurate, and you uh, you care about truth, so then people will listen to you and value what you say, and they'll want to listen to you, and it'll be as if you could talk forever, and then you can indulge in that in a way that is like actually productive. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Q&A tomorrow. Who plans on? Uh, as well? All right. Okay. We've got one, two, three. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. So that's enough. All right. See ya. Thank you.